While the hype continues to build around MCP, or Model Context Protocol, a growing number of engineers and organizations are becoming concerned about the potential security risks that MCP invites. Many are positive about the impact of AI agents connecting to data sources and tools, but have too many questions around its security, and rightly so. Questions of access, authentication, and proper auditing for the MCP and its access to data sources. Even Microsoft, in announcing plans to build MCP into Windows, stated that there needs to be a proxy to mediate all MCP client-server interactions. Well, today, I'm going to show you how we're tackling these concerns head-on by allowing users to secure their MCP servers with Teleport. And and note, Teleport Secure MCP will be available in a couple of weeks from the release of this video. There will be a link below for you to get on the notification list so you'll be the first to know when that happens. So for demonstration today, I have a SQLite MCP server running. This is from the Docker Toolkit and again just for demonstration, but I have the ability to query my database which houses mock employee data. Name, job title, years employed, department, skill sets, and whether they're still active or not. This is running in a private network, it's not exposed to the internet, and has been enrolled as an application in Teleport's Zero Trust platform. And first question, what can this server do? Looking at the docs and the tools it provides, it can perform three write actions and three read actions. And once you give people access to this, all of this, you invite a potential nightmare. Which leads to the second question of, how can I then limit not only who can access this server, but what particular actions or tooling they can access within this server? Remember, it's in a private network, it's protected by Teleport, that's great, but we need to manage access. Well, Teleport's been addressing this for years. All users and machines need to prove identity to authenticate to the platform, and then that identity is authorized to do certain things via RBAC, or role-based access control. So we not only can decide who can access the MCP server, but also who can access which particular tools on that server. Let me show you. So I have this user named Travis, and there's a role created called MCP Employee Read. And you'll see I've allowed only access to the read-only tools, read query, list tables, and describe table. And I'll assign this role to those users who I want to have read-only access, meaning they can run the three read tools allowed on this MCP server. And I've assigned it to Travis. So I'm this user, Travis, and I'll log into my Teleport cluster via CLI. And I can run a command to see which MCP servers I have access to. Again, only access to employee data demo, which is my MCP server. And then when I run the MCP login command, in addition to generating a short-lived certificate that, by the way, includes information about what tools I can and can't run according to my role, it will output the JSON configuration that I need to feed into any client that supports MCP. And I'll show you an example of that here in a minute. But you can also set the format flag to Claude. And by setting the format to Claude, it will automatically update the configuration in Claude Desktop. You see here that the file was just updated. And when I open up Claude Desktop, I see that my employee data demo MCP server is available to query with only the tools, the read-only tools, that we allowed this user with this role. So let's say I need a list of all employees in engineering who are still active at this organization. And when I run this, since Teleport sits between the client and the server, Teleport has the final say as to what you can and can't run. And it runs a series of queries, with the final one being the final call we need to get the right data. And if we look at our audit logs, we see that each query ran, and each have information on who requested, what time, the JSON RPC, the event, all the data that you should be able to review when needed. But here's where we draw the line. Travis wants to change some data. Thomas Davis has been here for four years, actually. Can you update that information for me? And you'll see that I'm not allowed. I do not have access to any tools that will perform this task for me. Who is allowed then? Well, admins, right? Well, they could be. Just create a privileged role for the admins and they can use all the tools. But here's a fun experiment. Imagine your organization decides that no one should be able to use these privileged right tools by default. It's just too risky. But in order to, you can request temporary access or just-in-time access to a privileged role that allows you to do so and this request be approved or denied by an admin. For instance, I have a role named MCP Employee Admin that grants full access and no one will be assigned this role. No standing superpowers here. But imagine I do need to change the data. I can go to New Access Request and request access to this admin role. Start date is immediately. Access duration is for only one hour. And this is actually what I configured in the role. So if they forget and go to lunch, this access will expire on its own. And the reason we'll put as need to change a value in the database. 
And an admin will see the request, the reason, and can reject or approve the request. Let's approve it. And by the way, there are just-in-time access plugins, so you can do this through Slack or Discord or PagerDuty. It's all in our docs. And now Travis can assume that role, that privileged role, for the remainder of the hour. Let me update my MCP configuration, and you'll see that I have admin access now to the MCP server. I have access to read and write tools. And instead of Claude, I can specify the format to be JSON, as we mentioned earlier, and I can plug it into another client instead, like the Windsurf code editor. Let's say I happen to forget what the schema was for this DB. Well, I can check right here in Windsurf. Or say I need help with the Redis integration, and I want to know which employee I can reach out to for help. I need help with Redis, which engineer has that skill set that I can contact, preferably one with the most years and is, of course, active. So again, what's the overall benefit here that Teleport's providing? Well, Teleport's doing what it has always done, protected your private infrastructure while providing easy access for your devs, increased productivity while maintaining robust security. And with this update, it will protect not only access to MCP servers, but controls what tooling users can and cannot run, all while providing the audit logs, not only of each query made, but of all the other sessions that take place in Teleport. Again, this will be available soon, Link below to be notified exactly when that happens. Also, you can expect more iteration and updates in Teleport around MCP overall in the coming months as well. Thanks for watching.